Welcome back to Chipped. I'm Chip Hall, and we are now coming to you from East Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Still no intro, so let's get into it. First, the show is changing already. Beat off with comedy stew, then the weather, and close with yoga and meditation. Just not this week. Next, please hit subscribe, ring the bell to get notifications, and give a thumbs up. Leave some love in the comments below. Now, during the weeks off, I learned something. If you say it isn't a show, nobody watches. And over the month of July, I realized how tired I am of all the coverage of Trump, Mueller, racist tweets, etc. Bill Maher calls this Trump fatigue in last Friday's episode, but for me, it's not just Trump, it's all politics. I'm already tired of Boris Johnson. And the Democrats have given me election exhaustion, and it's not even 2020. I noticed this initially during doing stand-up after the 2016 election. Most people just want an escape these days. Unless politics is your shtick, in which case people are paying to see you, keep it up. But I've decided that my comedy stew will be 100% Trump free. Everybody deserves a break and you can find it here. I have a lot of friends on both sides and I'd rather not alienate the only people that might actually watch this. And the world doesn't need another straight white comic chiming in on all that anyway. But here's Comedy Stew. Starting with last week and late night, links to everything will now and forever be in the description below. Last week was the premiere of a new Comedy Central late night show, Lights Out with David Spade. I went in with no expectations and I'm pleasantly surprised. Vaguely reminiscent of Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn, or as Al Madrigal put it, Chelsea Lately with less testosterone. The opening week featured some very funny, mostly West Coast comics. Monday, Neil Brennan, Eric Griffin, and Whitney Cummings. Tuesday, Jen Kirkman, Theo Vaughn, Candace Thompson. Wednesday, Jim Jeffries, Steve Byrne, and Kaylee Cuoco. Thursday, Dana Carvey, Al Madrigal, and Sarah Tiana. There are definitely some kinks to this show to iron out, and it'll take a few months for it to really find its legs, but hopefully Comedy Central lets it run for a while. I, I enjoyed it. And anything that puts more comics on TV is always a good thing. Moving on to stand-up comedy performances, there weren't any this week, mainly due to two days of exhausted Democrat debates. Although, Hassan Minhaj was on Fallon on Thursday. Before he came out as the guest, Jimmy and Hassan did a segment called Storytime. It has over 600,000 views here on YouTube as of Monday at noon. Both told hilarious, embarrassing family stories, but Hassan definitely won. His show is back on Netflix Sunday, August 4th, with a deep dive into the dark side of video games. Can't say enough great things about everything he does. He's also a friend of the show that doesn't know it because I let him borrow an iPhone charger five years ago at New York Comedy Club. Pretty sure he still owes me. John Oliver was back Sunday, July 28th. His coverage of Boris Johnson has over 4.9 million views here on YouTube. My favorite clip from last week, Late Night with Seth Meyers Monday Night. He ended his standard open, A Closer Look, on the recent political protests in Puerto Rico, then handing things off to Puerto Rican writer Jenny Hagel. Her coverage is the most wonderfully hilarious and honest that you can find out there. I've looked. The most viewed late night clip last week came from James Corden, Tuesday Night. Songs of the Summer riff off with John Legend, 1.4 million views. Stephen Colbert did two Meanwhile segments that pulled in over 700,000 views each. If you haven't seen it, because so much of his show does focus on Trump, the Meanwhile segment allows Colbert to joke about more lighthearted stories. Full Frontal with Samantha B from Wednesday had a few clips with over 500,000 views. The Kentucky Wants to Break Up with Mitch McConnell was my fave. The Real Time with Bill Maher New Rule about Trump fatigue that I mentioned at the beginning, 504,000 views since Friday. A Wednesday Daily Show segment with Dulce Sloan titled Study Show, 420,000 views. She's a friend of the show that might know it. And her take on romantic relationships made me laugh out loud. The always funny jokes Seth can't tell on Thursday, 317,000 views. This again features Jenny Hagel along with Amber Ruffin finishing premises when the punchline can't come from a straight white guy like Seth. A Corden segment titled Drop the Mic with Jeff Goldblum from Monday, 314,000 views. Amber Ruffin killed it solo Tuesday in her segment Amber Says What? 313,000 views. A cute clip from Kimmel Wednesday titled Kids Tell Us Who Should Be President. 
299,000 views. Thursday's Daily Show featured CP time with the hilarious Roy Wood Jr., 190,000. And last but not least, a couple of clips from Desus and Miro with over 100,000 views each. I really dig what they're doing. They had Anderson Cooper on along with Andy Cohen, and it was a riot. Mr. 360 was saying, fuck casually, attempting to drink rum straight from the bottle and failing. Definitely check them out. There were some other notable guests as well. The most viewed guest last week was from Monday night's Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, Fortnite World Cup champ Kyle Booga Giersdorf. Not only did he win $3 million playing video games, but the clip of his appearance got 3.3 million views here on YouTube, and that's three times more than The Rock got on the same show on Wednesday night. Melissa McCarthy with Kimmel on Monday, it earned 20,000 views. John Oliver with Seth, also Monday, 540,000. Kathy Griffin with Kimmel on Tuesday, 527,000. Alison Brie, also on Kimmel on Thursday, 352,000. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Kimmel again, this time Wednesday, 317,000. Wanda Sykes with Seth on Tuesday, 208,000. Michael Ian Black with Colbert on Wednesday, 196,000. And lastly, Rachel Brosnahan with Fallon on Monday, 120,000. While not necessarily a comedian, she does play one on TV, and she was very funny with Jimmy. I hope to see her in more comedy roles. Honorable mention. My favorite clip from a few weeks ago, Conan at Comic-Con, who honored Peter Mayhew, known for being the man behind Chewbacca, who passed away earlier this year. He honored him with a 21 Wookiee salute, picking 21 people dressed as Chewbacca off the San Diego Comic-Con floor for one massive Wookiee roar. And lastly, a funny video from here on YouTube, Everything Wrong with Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, by CinemaSins. I just discovered this channel through Dig. Check out the CinemaSins channel for a lot more funny videos. And now, to shift gears. There was some horrifically tragic news from the comedy world last weekend. While overshadowed by the senseless violence in Texas and Ohio, the New York City comedy scene is mourning the loss of David Kimowitz, one of the owners of the Stand Comedy Club, who was murdered Saturday morning in an attack on his New Jersey home. It is a tragic loss for the New York City comedy community, even more so for his wife and two daughters, who were fortunately out of town at the time. It appears the primary target of the attack was the family's au pair. From various accounts, the au pair had been attempting to break up with a mentally unstable boyfriend. According to one friend, this had been going on since 2018. Neighbors had complained that a car had been lurking recently by the Kimowitz home. The New York Times reports she had asked the ex to give her back the keys. And as they put it, he returned with a knife. Authorities were called to a residence around 6 a.m after the neighbors reported terrified screaming. Apparently the ex had bound the au pair's hands and chased her down the street with a knife. David was found inside the home and pronounced dead at the scene. The au pair was transported to a hospital where she also succumbed to her wounds. It is such a horrific crime. But fortunately, the ex was apprehended Sunday at Newark Airport while attempting to flee for Cancun. It appears he confessed to the double homicide. All we can hope is that justice is served. Adding to this tragedy is that the stand had just reopened at a new location. After over a year since the last location closed, the Interrobang put together a great Remembering David Kimowitz article, collecting expressions of grief and love from the New York City comedy scene. I didn't know Dave personally, but I know a lot of comics that did, and his loss will be felt in New York City for years to come. And that's all for the Comedy Stew this week. Take a moment today, send some love, to the Kimowitz family. I know that's something I'd usually let the yogi say, but there's no way I'm following this story with the weather or yoga. So that's all for today's show. I've gotta keep saying this until it feels natural. Please, please hit subscribe, ring the bell to get notifications, give a thumbs up, and let me know what you thought of the show in the comments below. Follow Karma Comedian and iYogiNYC on Instagram. Like the chipped page on Facebook. Check out my Patreon and GoFundMe pages if you're suddenly overcome with a desire to give me money. Thank you for watching Chipped. Someday we'll be back with a word from our sponsors. Stay tuned.